Cascadia is what a lot of people use to describe the bioregion that most of us know as the Pacific Northwest. The people that refer to this area as Cascadia have a number of different philosophies regarding government, economics, social constructs, and community. Having gained this new understanding of the place I call home, I was naturally curious what my peers thought of it, so I went to campus to find out. I don't really know much about the Cascadia region to have much of an opinion of it, but from what I just heard, it sounds really interesting and it sounds like it could be really cool and that, I don't know, people should learn about it because it's part of the environment. Cascadia, it's a magazine, I think, some sort of student publication. From my limited experience in this area, it's much more beautiful than California. Sorry, California. I don't really know a whole lot about Cascadia, but it sounds like an interesting thing, and I feel like I should look into it. One of the main reasons I came to the University of Oregon is because I love the area, and I think Cascadia is a beautiful region. Um, it has a lot of natural value. I have no idea really what Cascadia is. I thought it was a brand of clothing. So. To clarify all these misconceptions, I contacted and met with the founder of Cascadia, David McCloskey. I didn't name Cascadia, in effect, Cascadia named itself, and it named itself for what it does. And we know it's a true name because it says what it does and it does what it says. It doesn't matter whether you grow up here, you're native, or whether you, you move, there's just something so amazing, overwhelming about the power and presence of the landscape here. I love this place, and you know, you, there's a point at which you turn from kind of claiming the place that you feel claimed by the place instead. You gotta learn the, the geography. And the geography isn't about just where I am in the world, it's where we are together in the world, but more how does this world, that is our world, our life world, how does it work? How is it articulated? There's a basic confusion in terms of Cascadia. Uh, what are we referring to? When I say Cascadia, I mean the place, I mean the bioregion. The bioregion is, is a bit smaller, better defined area of life, not just a geography, to which then the founders of bioregionalism, Peter Brigg and so on, they, they said there's the train and here's culture. And what we're going to do is try to treat them together in the same framework. Other people mean a movement or a projection of their uh, dreams and desires. What's really amazing is that so many different groups who do not get along on, on any <laughs> common ground keep claiming the place. So I guess I'm fundamentally against putting an ideology or a projection of what we want over, over the land. And the reason is because that's the old story. My place is at the very core, and therefore to say there should be a politics before there's a culture, before there's a society, before there's a community, before there's an infrastructure, ecological foundation, seems to me back aspects. So this is the way back home. when there's a conference called Creating Cascadian Culture and the singers and the songwriters and the poets and the painters and the artists and the philosophers and the financiers and the innovators in energy efficiency technology and local food and they all come because they want to sing the place. That would be a success.
the map made the region, my region, real to people. Had it not a professor at a university, Seattle University, done all the field work and done the knowledge and made the map and could attest for it, people wouldn't have believed it. And because I could describe these places and how they how they worked, people believed it was true. When I started to make this map, people told me, I'll just leave the sea up, nobody would be interested in the sea. And I said, the sea makes the place. This land is a gift from the sea. So once you begin to see, oh, it's the mountains, it's the chain of mountains, and oh, it's the sea, and we live on the verge of the two. So all of this here geologically is given to us by the sea. The invisible world that we can't see is um, seamlessly woven with the world that we live in, and that's how the life of the place on all these levels is woven, and that's what the map is for. And by the way, that's the first time we've ever had an explanation of how life works or is woven together on all those levels. It's kind of odd when you think about it. Well, why can't we just tell that story in every place? So that's what this is intended to do, is to help people learn to begin to tell the story.